it's Shannon. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, please hit that subscribe button because you'll find new DIYs, tutorials, and new inspiration here every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Previously, I brought you a tutorial on both the black and white as well as the red and white buffalo check painting techniques. And today we're gonna work on a pretty pink and white version. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let me show you supplies that you're gonna need to create this buffalo check print. Of course, you're gonna need paint. I'm using chalk paint. This one is by Waverly from Walmart. It's in the color Ballet Slipper. I love using chalk paint because it dries really quickly and it doesn't peel back up whenever you remove your painter's tape. And we're gonna be doing lots and layers of this paint. So if you have chalk paint, definitely recommend it. They even come in smaller bottles. They're only about a dollar 60 something each. Um, I'm using the medium size. They come in even bigger size too. But I also have the color elephant here as well because we're gonna be mixing it to make a little bit darker of a pink color. And you'll also need white chalk paint. I also have a paper plate so we can mix our colors, painter's tape, use whatever size works for you and your project if you have a smaller project. I suggest this one inch size. If you have a big project, I would go with the wider painter's tape. You're also gonna need a few paint brushes. I love these foam paint brushes. And then you're gonna need your surface that you're gonna be painting on. This is just a sign from the Dollar Tree. It's chipboard, so really inexpensive. Of course, you can do this on wood or whatever project you're working on. It'd be cute for a tabletop or a tray or something like that. But Dollar Tree has really inexpensive signs, so if you wanna practice, this is a great way to start out too. So the first thing you need to do is prep your surface. If you're gonna be doing this on a wood sign, you definitely wanna sand your wood down. I like to use 60 or 80 grit sandpaper. This is just chipboard, so there's no prep involved, but we do need to give it a base coat of paint. So I'm gonna be using the white chalk paint and I'm gonna give this two coats, letting it dry in between. All right, so now my sign is painted white with two coats of the white chalk paint and completely dried. And now this next part is we're gonna start taping off our stripes. Now what I like to do is start in the middle and work my way out. That way I don't have an oddball, like I have a really nice crisp line on the side here. And by the time I get to this side, I might have just a teeny tiny strip and it just doesn't look even. So what I do is I always start in the middle and work my way out to the sides and this does take a little bit more time because you have to sort of measure out and kind of adjust your tape but it is definitely worth it to get a really nice finished piece so what i do is kind of just eyeball where i think about the middle is and then i take the centimeter side of a ruler and I just measure from the edge of the tape to the edge of the sign on both sides until I have equal uh, amounts of centimeters on both sides and then I know my tape is centered. All right, so like I said, it does take a little bit of time to get that first strip on there, but it is so worth the effort because the rest of your sign is gonna come out so beautifully. And now what we need to do is fill the rest of this with stripes. And basically what you need to do is you're gonna take one of your pieces of tape, and this is gonna be your placeholder piece of tape. So you're gonna line this up right next to the first stripe that you put down. You don't have to push down on this hard because we're gonna take that off in just a second. We're gonna lay a third strip down right up against the second one. So right now, we have three pieces of tape. We're gonna leave the two outside ones and we're gonna peel up the middle one. We're gonna repeat this process and basically what that ensures is that all of our stripes are gonna be the same width. So you just sort of just set that down, come back in with another piece of tape, put it up right next to it, remove the middle piece, make sure you push these down, the ones that are gonna stay, so you get nice clean edges and you repeat this with your whole sign. So here's the look at all of the vertical stripes. So now I can go ahead and add my pink chalk paint. I'm just gonna do one coat.
All right, so this is all nice and dry now. We're gonna take this and we're gonna turn it just a quarter of a turn. So now our stripes are going uh, left to right instead of up and down. And we need to repeat the process. We need to find the middle, add our piece of tape and build out from there until we get to the sides. And then we can add one more coat of the pink chalk paint. All right, so I have that second stripe of pink on there and that has dried. And now I am not gonna remove this painter's tape. We're gonna leave this right here. And what we need to do is go back and re-add our painter's tape to where we originally did. So you can kind of see where the pink is darker and then where it's lighter. We wanna put our tape back where the paint is lighter and we're just gonna layer that right over the existing painter's tape. All right, so now that all of the tape is put back into place, we need to make a darker pink. So I'm gonna mix my pink with the gray, and you really wanna go very, very sparingly with your gray paint. If you have some black, you can use that too to warm up the pink, but really just use the tiniest bit because it does not take much at all to give this pink paint a darker hue. So I'm just gonna add some of the pink paint to my paper plate. And then I'm gonna take a new paintbrush and dip out some of the gray. I'm gonna add this over here just so I have some on my plate and I can kind of add more if I need to. But really this is only going to take the tiniest bit of gray to darken our pink. All right, so here's my new pink color and I put the original color next to it so you could see the difference. You just wanna warm it up a little bit but not make it too, too dark. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add that paint, the new pink color to the exposed parts where there isn't tape. so very much for joining me for today's tutorial. I hope that it inspired you. Please take a second and give this video a thumbs up for me. Absolutely love this for Valentine's Day. Pink is definitely my go-to color this holiday, but I think this would work great during the springtime too. You could even change it up and do blue or green or yellow. If you haven't already, please click that subscribe button next to me. You'll find more great DIY tutorials in the link below that. And make sure to find me on Facebook and on Instagram for more inspiration. Thanks so much again, and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.